Good morning. So uh, today we have a uh, session which we, in which we are going to discuss about uh, questions which are related to divisibility. And probably this could, these kind of questions could be told as uh, some questions which are frequently asked in the previous question papers and also uh, which is of good importance for you to prepare for CTS. So it's easier. Uh, these questions are very easy to solve and simple ones which can actually give you scores very easily. So let's get started for today. Uh, with these questions. So firstly, uh, questions that we have for today is, yeah, so the first question that we have for today is, the question is talking about, so if a number is divisible by 63, it is also divisible by, is a question, okay? It is also divisible by what of the given numbers is the question. So what we know is 63 as a number is divisible by what and what, how could we see 63 as basically speaking two prime numbers 63 is made up of two prime numbers we know that i mean not two prime numbers one is seven as a prime number and nine seven into nine is 63 so which is very clear that we know 63 is divisible by seven and nine so if a number has to be divisible by 63 it should also be divisible by seven and nine am i right we could say in nine it is a subset of it, it is made of three and three. So which means obviously if in three also it should be divisible. So if a number is divisible by seven and nine, obviously if a number is divisible by three, it is also understood that it's divisible by, uh, if a number is divisible by nine, if it, it is also understood it is divisible by three. So it's very obvious that uh, if a number is divisible by 63, it should also be divisible by seven or nine. So if you have any one of them in the option, that is gonna be your answer. So we have four options. Well, first one says seven and we got it. And 11 is not something, 63 is not divisible by 11. 63 is not divisible by 13. 63 is not divisible by 17. So our obvious answer is seven. Am I clear? I think it's quite simple, right? A very simple technique through which you could score a mark very easily. Yes. So let's get started. Let's go on to the next question. So the next question that we have is, Just a minute. So this is about uh, how number, I mean, the question naturally works. And uh, probably we have some more questions, which is of the same kind. This topic, entirely we're going to share, uh, solve questions which are of the same kind, where uh, you'll get questions only on divisibility. Why are these questions very important is like, because uh, these questions will uh, add on to some portion of the test, which means especially in the quantitative aptitude part, we know that it is going to be um, it is going to be a section wise cutoff, especially in this company called CTS. So obviously we may have a problem in uh, actually scoring the scores. Getting a score on this is very, very essential. In each question is very essential. So let's get on to the second question that we have. So the number four, five, six, eight, five is completely divisible by three. The smallest number. So the question, the next question that is asked is smallest whole number, whole digit number in place of star can be. So they've given you a number which is four, five, six, star eight, five. So they want you to find if a number is divisible by three. So what we know, the divisibility of three is very easy. What is it? Some of the digits should be divisible by three. Some of the digits should be divisible by three. So if the sum of the digits is, a, is divisible by three means it is understood that the number is divisible by three. Yes. So what are the sum, what is the sum of the digits? Eight plus five is 13. 13 plus 16 is nine. Six is 19. 19 plus five is 24. 24 plus four is 28. So we have the number as five, four plus five plus six plus X plus eight plus five is what we could say. So the sum is 28. So how much should we add to this to get to the nearest number, which is divisible by three? So the nearest number after 28, which is divisible by three is 30. It is gonna be 30. So how much should we add along with 28? It is two. So if we add two, it becomes 30 for us. So two is the sum of the number, which we'll have to add. It's a very simple technique again. So all that we have to do is just add that number two so that it becomes divisible by, it is divisible by three. Okay, so our next question. The next question that we have is, 
again something which is related to divisibility so since they've told the smallest whole number that we have so the smallest whole number that we have is going to be two you can always ask a question why don't we get seven uh, i mean why don't we add i'm sorry eight why don't we add eight so that we get 36 why don't we add five so we get uh, 33 we could do those things but they very easily told you that the smallest whole number is what you get what do you want so since they're asking for the smallest whole number we are looking at two as an option rather than any other digit clear so let's get on to the next question so the next question that we have is Yeah, the next question that we have in the list is, it is talking about the number, what is the smallest number which has to be divided by the smallest number which is divisible by 2, 4, 5, 5 and 6 and 9 is the question. So the smallest number which is divisible by these numbers is the smallest square number which is divisible by 2, 4, 5, 6 and 9 is the question. So what is very simple here is the smallest square number is what they've asked for. They've asked for the smallest square number. So the smallest square number makes it very important because normally what we do is like the smallest number which is divisible by 2, 4, 5, 6 and 9 means we normally take tend to take the LCM and we'll get to the answer. But they've told about a square number, smallest square number. The easiest and the fastest technique to get to this answer is eliminating options, just by eliminating options. By looking at this, we could very easily understand we'll have to find a square number. So which among this is a square number? You know what is a square number? When a number is multiplied twice, uh, you get a number, which means a number which is divisible by two times by the same number. It is called a uh, square number. Probably, uh, for example, 2 into 2 is equal to 4. So we get, this is a square number. 3 into 3 is equal to 9. That is a square number, obvious. So which means we need a square number like that. 200, I don't think 200 is a square number. 90, no, it is not a square number. 180, no, it's not a square number. The only number which is divisible which is a square number here is 900. Is 900 divisible by all these numbers? Yes, it is because two, it is an even number. So for sure it is divisible by two. Four, yes, the last two digits are divisible. Last two digits are zero. So it's obvious it's divisible by uh, four. And five, five is because it is definitely divisible by five. five a number, if a number has to be divisible by five, it should be five or zero in the unit digit. So it's zero, so it's obvious. Six, it is divisible by six as well. 9, it is 9, 9 and 900 is 900. So it's a very easy technique. So our answer is going to be what? So our answer is going to be 900 for this question. Got it? So let's get on to the next question. Yeah, so look at this question. A number was divisible by, divided by 8, 7, 6 and 5 successfully and gave the remainder as 1, 2, 3 and 4. The number is, is the question. So then a number was divided by 1, 2, 8, 7, 6, and 5 and successively and gave the remainder as 1, 2, 3, and 4. The number is the question. Here, when you do it in a proper method, methodological solving takes a lot of time. It can take two plus minutes. But we know in aptitude tests, we will have to be very smart in finishing the questions at the quickest time. So finishing the questions at the quickest time, how do we do it? Very simple. Again, eliminating with options. Look at this. A number when divided by 8, 7, 6, and 5 successfully gives you a remainder of one, two, three, and four. The number is. So what is very clear is if a number is divisible by divided by five, it gives you a remainder as four. If if it is divided by five, it has to give you a remainder of four. So whichever number is divisible by five, the last digit is going to be five or it could be zero. Five or zero. So if it has to give you a remainder as four, the number should be five plus four it should end with nine or it should be zero plus four it should has to be ending with four so it should end with a nine or it should end with four that would be the number which could give you that kind of an understanding so that kind of a number where it could give you a remainder of four a remainder of four when it is divided by five so the own in this option whichever number is ending with, with nine or four could be the possible answer for that so with that we could eliminate this option and also this option very easily Clear? So the next option that we have is, if a number is divided, look at this 
eight. The next thing, we still have two options from which we'll have to pick out. So look at the first thing. A number when divided by eight gives you a remainder as one. If it is divided by eight, it should give you a remainder as one. So if a number has to be divided by eight, if it has to give you a remainder as one, so you know the divisibility of eight is last three digits should be divisible by eight. Last three digits should be divisible by eight. So if the last three digits should be divisible by eight, what are those numbers? Look at this, 209 or 334. And when you divide it by 8, it should give you a remainder of 1. If it has to give you a remainder of 1, we know it is an even number. An even number, if it has to give you a remainder as 1, it should be, because if a number has to be divisible by 8, it should be it should be an even number for sure. Because it should, it's common sense, because it is divisible by 2. 8 itself is divisible by 2. So obviously, if a number has to be divisible by 8, it should be having the last digit as an even number. So it has to give you a remainder as one. So if it has to give you a remainder as one, the number which is divisible by eight will be ending as an even number, but it has to give you a remainder as one. So obviously the number we get will be an odd number because see it has to end with an even number, but it should give you a remainder as one is what is told. Since he's telling you it has to give you a remainder of as one, for example, you see 128, it is divisible by eight but it has to give you a remainder as one. So what happens 128 plus one, your number is 129. When you divide 129 divided by eight, it gives you a remainder as one. And this would be possible only if this is an odd number. So our answer should be an odd number, not an even number. So this is eliminated, our answer is 3209. A very simple technique. Again, a very simple technique where you could eliminate options. I'm just telling you without solving questions, just by eliminating, we could get to the answer. Got it? So let's get on to the next question that we have. So our next question that we have is, so uh, again, as I told you, the, the divisibility questions are not gonna be very tough, just that we'll have to be making use of these questions eff efficiently because these are questions which could help you to score, quite, score very quickly and fast, okay? So that's why we have these questions in uh, place. So let's get on to the next question that we have in our hand. So what if there is a question which is asking about uh, uh, divisibility of 88 or divisibility of 77? All that we have to do is like, if a number has to be divisible by 88, it should be divisible by both eight as well as 11. Yes, if it has to be divisible by 88, it should be divisible by both eight as well as 11. 77 means it should be divisible by both seven and 11. So that is how things have to work out, okay? So if a number has to be divisible by a certain number, it has to be divisible by a certain, it has to be doing a certain job, okay? So that is the actual understanding behind this, got it. So let's get on to the next question that we have in place. That is the next question that we have is, Yeah, the next question that we have here is, so look at the question. What are the values of X and Y in uh, 7, 2, X, 2, 3, Y is the question, which is divisible by 88. Perfectly divisible by 88 is the question. It has to be perfectly divisible by 88. So if a number has to be divisible by 88, we know that it should be divisible by both 11 as well as 8. It has to be divisible by both 11 as well as 8. So we know it's very obvious. I don't know. Uh, how many people are able to uh, actually, uh, how many people actually know the divisibility of 11? So divisibility of 11 is like very simple. That is like uh, the, the, the difference between the alternate numbers. Okay, alternate numbers, or you could say the difference between the odd numbers, uh, odd digits and the even digits should be zero or 11. Odd digits and even digits, okay? So when you subtract both of this, the difference should be, 0 or 11. So keeping that in mind, we have 72x23. Why? Very simple here. It is divisible by 88. If it has to be divisible by 88, it has to be 11 and 8 in which you has to divis be divisible by. And if it has to be divisible by 8, we know it should be ending as an even number. It has to be divisible by, uh, it has, the last digit should be an even number for sure. So that case, we can eliminate the first two options. 
So it should be divisible by a even number. So first two options could be eliminated. So we should be having this as an answer or this as an answer. So if you put the last digit as for sure, then we could confirm that the last digit is going to be two because both options are giving you the last digit as two. So our answer could be seven two x two three two seven two x two three two. So we taking this in mind, what we have is alternate digits. When we had two plus two is four, four plus two is six. So six is what we have. Then even digits. When you take the even digits here, what do we have? I mean, odd odd digits. We we have seven plus x plus three is what we have. Even digit we have it as two plus two plus two, which is equal to six. Is equal to six. So this is six here, and this is going to be seven plus x plus three. And we know very easily this is going to be ten plus x. The odd digits. Even digits is six. Summation is six. So very obvious, getting to a zero is not possible. But what is possible? Getting to eleven. Getting to eleven because ten plus x, okay, and minus six should give you eleven. Ten plus x minus six should give you eleven. So what will we put in the place of x so that we get eleven? So it should be ten plus seven minus six can give you eleven. So this should be x should be seven. So our answer is very obvious. It is six seven here. Got it. So our answer is x is equal to seven and y is equal to two. A very simple method. Got it. Clear. So this is your answer for the next question. Clear. Hope uh, people are able to understand this. You know how simple it is to actually get these questions right. Got it. So let's get on to the next question that we have. The next question that we have is going to be very similar to this only, and the question is going to be uh, which is related to. The next question that we have is uh, a number has to be divisible by seven six four x y is divisible by ninety. So what is the value of x plus y? Is the question. It is divisible by ninety. What is the value of x plus y? Very simple. Again, what I say is, if a number has to be divisible by ninety, it has to be divisible by nine and ten. A number has to be divisible by both nine and ten. It's obvious, correct? So if a number has to be divisible by both nine and ten, we are very sure that. The last digit is going to be zero, correct? Because if a number is divisible by ninety, you know it is going to be ninety, one eighty, two seventy. The last digits are going to be zero only. Yes. So if it is going to be last digit as zero, we could very easily say seven six four x and zero. Clear? And what we have is divisibility of nine. Divisibility of nine is what? Some of the digits should be divisible by nine. Some of the digits should be divisible by nine. So seven plus six plus four. Seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen plus four is seventeen. Seventeen plus x plus zero. Seventeen plus x plus zero. So it's very obvious that seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen plus four is seventeen. Seventeen plus one gives you a number which is divisible by uh, nine. It's obvious that it's going to be one, or it should be ten. Ten is not possible because it's a single digit number, one digit number. So we'll have to use a one year, so it becomes eighteen. So eighteen will be divisible by nine for sure. So our answer is. One, one. So our answer is seven six four one zero. That could be the answer for this question. Okay, clear. So this is how simple you can actually solve those questions. And this is this is the kind of questions that you get in uh, CTS for your uh, divisibility related questions. And pretty obviously, you can expect one or two questions uh, from this particular topic, especially in divisibility. That's why it's very simple for you to clear the quantitative aptitude. Of the uh, of this particular company, the reason is being, uh, if you have a pattern of solving these questions repeatedly, you can very easily clear this round. Okay, so I'll see you guys in my next video, and I would really like to thank you so much for the for your time and patience. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye, people.